This is eHobbyist Blog, a log of electronics hobbyist activities aimed at city dwellers, retirees, students, and other not so nefarious characters who have limited space, limited money, and limited time. My name is Neil. Welcome. In this video, we attempt to answer the pressing question, just what exactly is a prototyping system? Now, the first thing I do when I start a new project is to try to define just what it is exactly this system is supposed to be doing. And I refer to this as a functional analysis. I'm using a diagramming tool called Visio, which is a Microsoft tool. This one is from 2003. I, I never use Microsoft tools after the year 2007. Starting in 2007, Microsoft decided to abandon common user access interface and came up with this crazy iconic interface that nobody can quite understand. In any event, I'll represent the prototyping system as a single functional box. What does the prototyping system do? Well, a prototyping system is going to expedite the process of going from a circuit idea, which might be a circuit diagram, into a fully tested breadboarded circuit. That's a fairly decent description and answer to the question, what the bleep does a prototyping system do? But it's not detailed enough. I'm going to take my analytical scalpel here and partition the prototyping system into its constituent functions and take it down one more level of detail. I'm going to partition the prototyping system into its constituent subfunctions. Uh, the first subfunction is breadboard the test circuit. Now what this means is the subfunction which allows you to create the uh, breadboarded version of a a circuit idea using various and sundry electronic components and uh, gotta make this look a little prettier than it was before and uh, subsequently allow you to perform various and sundry tests on it. Now the, the breadboard test circuit function may consist of a number of things in just sockets and breadboards. It may allow you to move the entire breadboarded circuit from one place to another. It may allow you to affix the breadboarded test circuit to uh, an enclosure. So there, there may be a little bit more to breadboard test circuit than one would ordinarily think. Now let me take a look at another sub-function of the prototyping system. And let me get, get this aligned here. And the next function I want to take a look at is power components. If I have a breadboarded circuit, I'm in general going to need power. Power up the test circuit and see what it can do. So I need something to supply that power. Uh, just let me make this a little more even. I got to spread this out, make it look pretty. If I'm going to take this public, uh, the the function power components involves not only powering the breadboard test circuit, but it also involves powering the internal components of the prototyping system. For example, if the prototyping system contains bounceless push buttons or waveform generators or uh, voltmeters, then those things have to be powered internally in addition to the external powering of the breadboard circuit itself. The next sub-function to the prototyping system is enclosing components. Now, if you're going to have a breadboarding test circuit function and you're going to power it up with some component powering function, you're going to have electrical components and those components need to be protected from the external environment. It's not a project until you can 
protect your components uh, from external environments, smoke, grease, dust, cat hair, baby fingers, and so forth. And so you need to enclose your components. Now, it's difficult at this stage until you get into the design to specify a particular enclosure. However, I wanted to put this up front because I've had problems in this area before where I need some esoteric enclosure and it's not available directly through the online distributors so I have to order it from the manufacturer and that could take anywhere from one day to one month. So I put this up front here just to emphasize yes I do need to enclose the components and yes I do need to order it amongst the first things I put on order The uh, next sub-function I want to take a look at involves those things that are peripheral to breadboarding the test circuit. And the first thing we need is the ability to generate test input. Uh, in an analog case, uh, test input might be sine wave or a square wave or a triangle wave or some com combination thereof. It might be a step function. It might be just a standardized voltage. One voltage as opposed to another, or one current as opposed to another. If we're dealing with digital breadboarded circuits, we may need to input perhaps 8 bits of digital input. We may also need clock circuits we may uh, that's what's wrong with it <laughs> we may need to uh, generate pulses that can be used to clock the digital circuit to set and reset it and there may be other cases of test inputs that i can't really think of at this point but uh, for sure uh, at a high level, a sub-function of a prototyping system would be to generate the test inputs for this breadboarded circuit. The next sub-function I want to look at in more detail is a monitor test output. Now, in your proto in in this prototyping system, not yours but mine. Let me just connect this here. Alrighty. Once you've got the circuit breadboarded, and once you are able to generate test inputs and feed it into the system, which is powered by your power components function, you need to be able to monitor it. If you're inputting a voltage, you need to be able to measure the voltage, AC or DC coming out, RMS, average, what have you. It would be nice to take a look at the waveform. If you're putting a sine wave in, how distorted is it coming out? Well, let's, let's look at it, perhaps, uh, an oscilloscope. I don't know whether we can actually build an oscilloscope into this thing, but I wouldn't rule it out at this point. Also, uh, Digital voltmeter, okay, uh, yeah, I can build the digital voltmeter, kind of. I don't know if I can get all the automatic functions working properly in a reasonable amount of time, but I'm not going to discard that either. I also need the ability to monitor the power system and how much power is being used by the circuit, and that, I don't know where to put that function, perhaps under monitor, uh, perhaps under the power components function itself. The last function I want to deal with at this level is a kind of a miscellaneous component. It's a kind of a miscellaneous. I often, oh, hang it. Can I do it? Yes, I can, kind of. There is a, a kind of a miscellaneous function. Often when I'm breadboarding something, I need to 
stick components in that are not easily obtained in a 0.1 inch by 0.1 inch format. And I'm thinking of, well, you can get single pull, single throw switches in breadboard compatible form, but uh, I more often need double pull, double throw switches. Potentiometers, yes, you can get them in the proper form for sticking onto a breadboard, but they tend to be very fragile, and once you use it two or three times, the leads tend to be bent out of all hope of restoration or will break off. So I need uncommitted components that I can stick into the breadboard without having to go fishing through my box of components. So uh, this would include uh, switches of various and sundry types. It would include potentiometers. It might include decade resistance and decade capacitance boxes or any number of other things that oh, would be more convenient if they were packaged as part of the prototyping system. So at this point, I have a second level functional definition of the prototyping system. A prototyping system is something that expedites the development of electronic circuits going from an idea to a fully tested breadboarded version. It consists of a function that encloses all of the subcomponents. It consists of a function that allows you to breadboard the test circuit, that powers the components, both of the breadboarded circuit and of the internal uh, functions of the prototyping system. It allows you to generate uh, test signals for input to your breadboarded circuit. It allows you to monitor the output of this, your breadboarded circuit. And finally, it provides a number of uncommitted components that just facilitate the breadboarding process. In this video, we attempted to answer a high-level question, just what exactly is a prototyping system? And we came up with high-level functions. In the next video, we're going to do some research what appears in various and sundry forms of literature, and what appears in sales catalogs. Are vendors selling these things? And if so, does it make sense to buy rather than build? If you want to be notified as to when the next video is available, click on the YouTube subscribe button. If you want to suggest future directions or topics, make corrections to published videos, or voice your opinion on related matters, then leave a YouTube comment. It's not all that difficult, and I promise to read it. If you want to see supplementary material that cannot be easily presented in video form, such as high-res graphics, vector graphics, files in different formats, lists of references, uh, go to the corresponding website. Until the next time, good day.